The Boys is back this week with episode 5 of season 4, and no, that wasn't the movie Black Sheep you were watching. Following on from an episode 4 where we saw it pretty much centre around Homelander, this one was more focused around developing the wider plot forward with the soup virus from Gen V being brought into the show. Along with Sam and Kate and the two different pathways between the boys and the seven starting to get laid down. With parallels between Huey and his father and also Ryan and Homelander, let's jump into the episode and break down all that there was to take away from it. Here is the boys season 4 episode 5 ending explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. As per usual, I'll break the episode down by each individual character arc. Homelander Following Homelander going through the process of removing his humanity in episode 4 where he went to B6 and slaughtered everybody there except Barbara as a way of getting revenge for how he was treated there when he was younger. Within this episode, it showed that it did actually have an impact on him. However, not the reveling and transformative one that he thought it would have. At the V52 Expo, which was clearly a play on the D23 Disney Expo, the crowd were going crazy, and whilst they were cheering, Homelander was having flashbacks to what he did in the previous episode, and also all of the trauma that he went through when he was younger. This to me showed that it's still present within him, and like I said last week, he didn't address the trauma in a way that would allow him to truly move on. It would only allow him to push it deeper and deeper inside of his mind, and that's exactly what we saw happen in this episode. It's still there, it can still reach him, he can still reach it, and it's still going to impact him when it lands in his mind. In saying that though, the one transformative thing that the slaughtering did cause to happen to Homelander was it seemed like it did actually remove his need to be loved and the care that he had for it. Sister Sage told Homelander that everybody was cheering for him and that they loved him and he didn't even respond to it. And also, when he was with Ryan, he said that the whole planet was empty except for himself and his son showing that he actually no longer cared about the approval of others and the love that he once craved. The only thing that he cared for was his sons, the very person that he felt the love had been lacking from throughout the entirety of the season so far. So seeing Homelander almost let go of that and adopt his new demeanour was something that was actually quite refreshing to see. We saw a Homelander with more of an I don't care attitude, and that also transferred into the final scene with him where he was speaking with the Seven. He mentioned how war was on the horizon and that everybody in the room would need to do some terrible things. They would need to act like wrathful gods and in turn lose their loving celebrity status. Homelander believes and is the face of soup supremacy and with him essentially assembling his army and pushing his beliefs onto them properly now, it shows that the threat level has increased dramatically. Ryan this episode was a really important one for the development of Ryan. For the longest time, Homelander had been trying to mold Ryan into a mini version of himself and putting pressure on him to act a certain way. Like Homelander said himself, he was almost treating Ryan how he was treated when he was younger because that was the only thing that he knew. So after what occurred in episode 4, Homelander realised that he needed to let Ryan just be who he wanted to be, and by doing so, he could still naturally shape him and put the Homelander twist on it. Ryan wanted to help people, because he's half human remember, but when it came to helping the assistant, Homelander got Ryan to lean into the violent and manipulative side within him and was genuinely acting like a mini Homelander. This doesn't bode well for the future of the character as at the moment he's tipping towards the side of Homelander, where a couple of episodes ago it felt like Butcher was getting him on side. I think Homelander and Ryan are naturally going to become closer now that there isn't any pressure between them and that will change the character dramatically. Especially when he finds out that Butcher is trying to get a hold of a virus that can wipe out soups. Something that could quite easily harm him. Butcher Butcher's arc in this episode was one that was really interesting. Butcher felt like it was finally time to tell the boys about the virus and after meeting with Joe, he devised a plan to get Stan Edgar out of prison with the intention of leading him towards where they'd be able to find the virus. Butcher wants to weaponize the virus so that he can take out Homelander. However, in its current state, the virus wouldn't do enough to kill him, so the plan that he had was to instead test it and take out Victoria Newman with it. There's a theory out there about Joe not being real and potentially being a vision like Becca. Maybe something that's caused by the parasite that's in his system. I was on the fence about that, but in the closing moments of this episode, when we saw that Butcher hid Samir and he chopped off his leg to make it seem like he was eaten by one of the sheep, when Butcher said us and was referring to Joe being next to him, Samir looked over in the direction that Butcher looked and he seemed a bit confused, almost as if nobody else was there. 
So I feel we're going to see that potentially being developed further as the episode goes on. Something which will make people question Butcher's sanity. Whilst at the house, we saw that Tamir had been putting V into animals and they were essentially going rogue. Bulls, chickens, rabbits, and most dangerously, sheep. So they essentially found themselves being trapped in a barn until Samir put the one remaining sample of the virus into the body of a dead lab assistant, which then meant that the sheep would get the virus and die once they took a bite. This is pretty much what happened, and it led to Stan going back to prison because his deal was focused on securing the virus for Butcher. However, Newman rescued him in the closing moments. Newman had a look on her face where it seemed like all she wanted was that father figure and comfort, something she's been lacking for a long time. With her thinking that Samir was dead, the boys trying to kill her, Homelander being a threat and having to look after Zoe, I think all she wanted was some kind of comfort. And weirdly enough, Stan Edgar might be able to give her that. There was a moment in this episode with Butcher that did actually make me laugh quite a bit. It was when he rescued the rabbit and Kamiko was just standing there watching him and smiling when he turned around, almost surprised at the kind heart that he had within him. I think that's the thing with Butcher. He can be cruel sometimes, but deep within, he has values and beliefs where he doesn't want to harm anything that doesn't cause any wrong. Hence why he felt he was doing the right thing by letting the harmless rabbit go. However, as we saw when he was in the woods, the bunny had been consumed by the V that was inside of it. There was this worm-like, tentacle-like thing coming out of it, and Butcher was in complete shock at the sight of it. I wonder if that's what's inside of him. We've seen this parasite crawling under his skin, so what if that's the very thing that's consuming him from within, hence his violent approach to put it down. With Butcher having Samir at the end and saying that he's going to force him to go on to create more of the virus, whilst Newman and everybody else thinks that it's safely been destroyed, the whole situation is about to get a lot worse. Homelander has assembled his army of soups, and it feels like the virus is genuinely the only thing that's going to stop them once it's weaponized. Starlight Starlight's actions of attacking Firecracker on stage have come back to haunt her and she was being targeted with abuse and the destruction of her organization. For a few episodes, I've been truly trying to understand what it was that she was trying to achieve. You know, everybody's got their demons in this season of the show and it's all to do with them addressing their past. And for me, in this episode, it finally clicked with her. Starlight is trying to live her life as Annie, but the thing is, she's so far removed from being Annie, and only knows how to live her life as Starlight that she's now undergoing an identity crisis, and she needs to find a way to navigate out of it and merge those two profiles back together. Even though she only knows how to be Starlight, she's struggling to use her powers, which kind of puts her in this weird type of purgatory of identities, where she doesn't know how to be either of them, and she's just merely existing and is trying to remember who she truly is. I don't know what she needs to do to latch onto those identities, but it shows that what she went through in the Seven and all of the trauma that she endured has impacted her greatly. And with her private life being placed all over the news due to Firecracker, it's causing her to go within herself even more. She said how Frenchie needed to speak with somebody, but I think in reality, she does too. Huey Huey's story in this episode was something that actually got some emotion out of me. In the previous episode, Daphne gave Huey's father some compound fee in order to save him, and we saw that it did work. With it seeming like everything was fine with him, the first sign of something being wrong was when Hugh couldn't remember where Daphne went when she walked out of the room. We were all speculating what his powers would be, and it turned out that he could essentially move through objects like they weren't there, even grabbing a hold of human hearts. The reason it went wrong was because Hugh was brain dead following his stroke, so it didn't restore him to full health. Hence why there were spells where he didn't know what was going on, why Daphne was there when he believed that she left him, didn't understand where he was or who his son was either. With him going on to kill several innocent people in the hospital, Huey realized that he needed to kill his father and finally let go of him, something that he'd been putting off doing for the entirety of the season. This was genuinely such a heartbreaking moment to watch. Huey was comforting his father as he gave him the dose which eventually put him to sleep for good, supporting what Butcher said the episode before about not giving the V to his father because it wouldn't bode well. Huey went from being the son who was once looked after to being the comforting father type figure in this episode and showing strength and standing by his father's side as he took his last breath. A-Train and Sister Sage A-Train is one lucky guy. Sister Sage is definitely fully aware of what A-Train did, but for some reason, she's not throwing him under the bus in front of Homelander. Maybe she views him as an asset, and for some reason, she thinks she can utilize him to her advantage. A-Train was on the cusp of being found out for being the person who leaked the video footage, which showed that the Starlighters were innocent for the murder of the Homelander 3. 
With him feeling like the walls were closing in, he told Ashley due to them saying that they were going to keep quiet about the fact that they were in Homelander's apartment, and Ashley instead pinned the blame onto Cameron Coleman. Ashley didn't like the fact that he was no longer being intimate with her and he dumped her following her losing her job. So she emasculated him in the biggest way possible and had the Seven kill him after making it seem like he was speaking with Mother's Milk and shared the footage with him. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really like Ashley, but this made me dislike her even more. The smile that she had on her face showed just how much of a heartless individual she is and how selfish she is too. I do think A-Train is going to undergo some type of redemption arc in this season of the show, but I do think he's going to get found out and ultimately end up being killed by Homelander. He's had a good run, pardon the pun, but I think the best way for his character to go out would be by finally doing good by himself. He'll either side with the boys in this season, or he'll be killed and won't get the chance to walk away from the Seven. Sam and Kate Cough. Kate piped up, didn't she? She's definitely not changed since the end of Gen V, and her belief in soup supremacy is clearly just as strong as what it was the last time that we saw her. Sam and Kate were both in the room when Cameron Coleman was being killed. They were involved in it. They were also listening to Homelander's propaganda, and it showed that they're going to be involved in Homelander's plan. They can reach an audience that the rest of the Seven can't, so I think they're going to be vital in recruiting a younger demographic into the belief system. It was a small cameo appearance from the both of them, but I'd like to see them in the show again, and seeing exactly what they're going to bring to the plan. My review of the episode. I thought this was a good episode of the show. It was always going to be difficult to do one better than last week, but this followed on nicely. I loved seeing how numb Homelander was to the world, and the interest that he took in Ryan in a completely different way. Whilst it felt like Butcher was on this arc of leaning into his good side, it very much feels like now he's going to be leaning more towards that darkness that we've seen him have throughout the first three seasons. The development of the virus is something that's huge, and I thought Starlight and Kamiko would have been a bit more concerned, but they weren't that fearful. With regards to Frenchie, we're seeing a real human side to him in this season of the show, and we're probably having more screen time with him compared to ever before. With him handing himself into the police and him being the first person that's accepting the consequences for the actions of his past, I do wonder what that means for the character moving forward. Surely he's not going to be in a cell for the rest of the season. I actually can't believe we've only got three episodes left of season four. It feels like it's absolutely flying by. We've waited two years and it's going to be over in three weeks, so I'm already quite gutted about that. There wasn't much action in this episode, but it felt like it was more about establishing the two different sides and the divide that's not only forming between the boys and the Seven, but also the division that's present within the Seven internally and the boys internally too. So it really is all over the place with lies and deceit. The stakes are just getting higher and higher, and I'm here for it. So, there you have it. The Boys Season 4 Episode 5 Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos on The Boys Season 4 or Gen V, then click on the card in the top corner. There's an entire playlist there. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. What did you think of this episode? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.